Hi everyone! Today I'll be walking you through my process of how I made this illustration into an animation. I hope you enjoy it! First, I chose an illustration and brought it into Photoshop. This painting is by Cynthia Xu Yu Pan from her book Crystal Fish. I used Photoshop to separate the image into layers, like the background, the characters, and the foreground elements. I used the stamp tool to complete each layer, so for example, the background layer is only water. I duplicated the layers for each element and used the lasso tool and eraser to cut them out from the rest. I made sure to separate all the moving elements, like these fish, that would move independently. For some of these duplicated fish, I chose to keep only a few and copy and paste them later on. This saves a lot of time instead of cutting them out and animating them all individually. I also chose to extend the image a little bit so that it would fit a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. When I create a clipping mask, that allows me to paint over the layer without painting outside of the edge. And I used the stamp tool to fix any parts that were covered by another element in the illustration. I used After Effects for the animation. I brought the Photoshop file into After Effects, and this will allow me to use the same layers as I have in Photoshop. The benefit of this is that I can also update anything in the Photoshop layers and it will automatically update in the After Effects file. I created a new composition and named it. I made sure that it was a bit longer than I needed, in case I have to trim it down later. I then dragged all the layers in and organized them to match my Photoshop file. For simple animations like these wheels, I centered the pivot and set a rotation key at the start and at the end. I used the Puppet Advanced Pin Tool to manipulate the characters and key rotations and positions. I used the Puppet Position Pin Tool to lock down any part of the characters that I didn't want to move. For example, in this case, the part of the fish that attaches to the bicycle. If I select the keys, right click and press Keyframe Assistant, Easy Ease. I can see that the motion between these keyframes has eased a little bit. 
I could also use the graph editor to try and control the curves more smoothly using the tangents. By pasting the first key at the end of the motion, I made a loopable animation. I then copy and pasted the looping keyframes all the way to the end. It's also possible to create a looping animation using time remapping. Now that I have all the individual movements, I will add some overall animation for each fish, so it looks more like they're moving through space a bit. I duplicated the layer and masked out the individual character. If you have cleaner layers than I do, with only one character per layer, you can of course skip this step. At this stage you could also make 3D layers. If you create a camera, you will be able to create very cool looking parallax and camera movements, like I did in this shot. For this scene, however, I'll keep it simpler without the 3D layers. I repositioned the anchor to the center of the character, so that when I rotate the layer, it rotates around the anchor point. Next, I animate the position and rotations of these layers so the whole character has motion. Since I have a crowd or school of fish, I pre-composed the layers and duplicated them as many times as needed and positioned them to match the original illustration. I also dragged the clips and offset the animation to make it less obvious that they're duplicates. To create this scrolling background, I made a new background composition. 
and in the composition settings, I changed the width as needed. I then duplicated the background layers and moved them to create a long background. To avoid these hard edges, I created a mask around the edge and feathered the mask. Back in the main composition, I set a key at the start and end and positioned the background from left to right. For these overlay or foreground rocks, I moved them across the screen a lot faster than the background to create a parallax effect. I wanted to make a paper cutout feeling, so I added a drop shadow by selecting the layers, right click, layer styles, and drop shadow. I changed the settings until I liked the look of it. For the foreground rocks, I added a camera lens blur. Finally, I trimmed down the composition so that none of the clips are cut off. Then I could finally export the animated scene. Thanks so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed that. Uh, I'm very excited to share with you the final animated short film based on the illustrations and story by Cynthia. Stay tuned for that. Bye!